of California Indians. Spanish priests made a mistake of regarding California Indians as children incapable of development beyond a child's level. Thus they created a relationship of dependence and paternalism. Every detail of work, play, clothing, and choice of mate was rigidly controlled by the priests. Corporal punishment was a common practice on these missions. Spanish priests believed it was their obligation to civilize California Indians by means necessary. Any deviation from Christianity or from performing their duties and tasks meant corporal punishment. Priests sought to abolish any pre-Christian practices. It was common practice to utilize whips, iron bars, incarceration, and other labor punishments. Life for mission Indians was exceptionally hard and cruel. The missions had an extremely high mortality rate. For example, the population of California Indians from San Francisco to San Diego dropped from 72,000 to 18,000, a decline of over for 75%. The average life expectancy at the Santa Cruz mission was eight and a half years after conversion, due, of course, to disease, but other factors um, played a major role also in the depopulation of California Indians, such as sanitation, the confinement in missions, whereas before, California Indians had frequent cleansing rituals and customs of burning their dwellings each year, and overall, a very physical and healthy life. They had a change, in one that was nutritious to one that was very foreign to their physical body. And, of course, the cruel treatment through rigid discipline and corporal punishment. The role of the Presidio. With every mission came a Presidio, and each Presidio had anywhere from a handful to several hundred soldiers, whom the majority were criminals and convicts from Spain, sentenced to serve out their time in the New World. Their main purpose was to protect the missions and surrounding pueblos. However, they were mainly ordered by mission priests to round up fugitive neophytes. In their quest for more possible heathens to baptize, the priests often bribed Spanish soldiers with money and goods in exchange for their services in rounding up or words, kidnapping Gentile California Indians and bringing them to the missions. Rape was a common occurrence. California women of surrounding tribes as well as women on the missions were commonly or constantly raped by Spanish soldiers. This type of violence is less of a sexual act and more of a tactic of intimidation and domination. The idea was to demoralize both Indian men as well as Indian women. Some women were ostracized after being raped by Spanish soldiers, while others had to go through extensive cleansing rituals in order to return to their tribe. In the midst of all this, a controversial figure will arise, Father Junipero Serra, he will be remembered as a staunch defender of Indian rights. He, he will commit his life writing endless accounts of the brutalities of the Spanish soldiers, in particular of California Indian women, and he will send numerous pleas to the Spanish government to curb this violent behavior. However, other more critical academics do 
not separate Father Junipero Serra from the overall violence and sufferings of California Indians. They argue that while Junipero Serra saw himself as protecting California Indians from these cruelties, he failed to recognize he continued to pioneer northward into Indian territory. He brought violence with him. With every mission established, a fort was erected with Spanish soldiers along with the violence, spread of disease, forceful cultural transformations, and devastating changes in the ecology that impacted the same people he professed to be protecting. California Indian women and children. For California Indian women, they were twice subject to violence with impunity. They were both California Indian and women. They were often locked in dormitories only to be let out to labor or attend religious ceremonies. Priests freed them if they were married, but widowed, they would have turned to the dormitory. This type of separation from family took an emotional toll on younger California Indian women, such as the traditional rituals that were prohibited and kept young women from learning important information on sexuality, childbirth, and adolescent social behavior, skills, knowledge, etc. California Indian children were often kidnapped as young as five years old. They had the dual purpose of indoctrination and to ensure that uh, parents would not oppose the mission authority. Why then did California Indians end up on the missions? At first, many came to the missions out of sheer curiosity. The material goods, new foods, metalwares, domestic animals, etc. were strange and foreign to them. They also saw mission priests and soldiers as having certain shamanistic powers. They had strange medicines and thought to be able to serve as intermediaries of the spirit world. Many California Indians also questioned why the Spanish did not get sick from the diseases their people were, di were dying from. How could one ride a horse or the ability to control an animal without possessing great powers? However, that curiosity quickly subsided and most California Indians ended up on the missions for two reasons. They were kidnapped or forced to. Usually children are forced to the missions and the parents soon follow to be close to their children. More importantly was disease. It is to understand that the spread of disease devastated entire communities. Elders who pass away, pass away with their knowledge and skills necessary for survival of the entire tribe or community. The work required for communal living and survival becomes more and more difficult as people are dying each day. Over time, California Indians became physically and spiritually demoralized, believing that their shaman's own medicine wasn't working. Their own spirituality was not working. The missions, no matter how cruel the conditions, became a desperate option for food and shelter. After the initial generation, each mission had California Indian children that were born into the missions and knew no other life. In conclusion, the mission of the missions was a complete failure. Missions were supposed to only exist for 10 years. California Indians were to be Hispanicized, land parceled out to them, and they were to become trained native officials loyal to Spain that would then self-govern. However, the missions lasted several decades and some more than a century. Californians were never fully converted. 
only about 50,000 out of 350,000 were actually baptized. And as we know, baptism does not mean full conversion. And thus, many California Indians continued their culture and traditions. In addition, land was never parceled out 